Now for new stuff for today. We're going to start off with uh, Zeus and Hera's legitimate children, the legi legitimate children that Zeus has that, um, well, you'll see what I mean. At least they, they arrive during the time in which Zeus and Hera are married to each other. We'll start with Ares. The Romans called him Mars. I give you God of bad wars as a way of just quickly summarizing what Ares is about. He's really the God of the bad stuff that happens in wars, but that's a little bit long. Um, that when you think about wars, the atrocities, the bloodlust, the um, mindless violence, needless violence. Um, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about bad wars, all right? Um, he's, he's the God of bad wars. You see him with his symbol there, the shield. Ares, you're going to find out an awful lot about. I'll tell you one story about him today. Um, he's, he's, he's the least popular of all the gods among the other gods. Very few of the other gods get along with him. Aphrodite gets along with him way too well, which we'll be talking about, but she gets along with everybody. Um, he's notorious for switching sides in the middle of wars. Um, not a very reliable god. He's the closest to a chaotic or just m recklessly evil god among the Olympians. I mean, at least most some of the other gods you know, are evil sometimes and good sometimes. Ari is just pretty much across the board an evil kind of guy. Um, he has um, some children who follow him around. His children are Eris. You don't have to worry about getting these names down. Eris, the, who's the god of strife, and Phobos. Phobos literally means fear, um, pain, and panic, and famine. These are kind of animistic spirits that follow. They follow, follow Ares around, um, fear and panic. Overall, not a very good guy. He's a crybaby. Um, Zeus nails him up in a barrel one time. He can't put up with his whining, so he just nails him up in a barrel. Anyway, he's not, he's not one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, Zeus and Hera have two daughters who are not all that significant in the myths. There's Alethea. I just give you her name there. She's the goddess of childbirth. She shows up in an awful lot of myths, but she's kind of like a, like a side character because in an awful lot of myths, babies are born, and you have to have the goddess of childbirth somehow around when a baby's born, and so she'll show up and then leave, but as far as much of a story, there's not much going on there. And so she's not considered one of the Olympians. She's one of Zeus and Hera's daughters, but she doesn't fit into that, that category of being an Olympian. And much the same is true of the next of Zeus and Hera's daughter, daughters, um, Hebe, the goddess of youthful beauty. She's the cupbearer for the gods for a while until she messes up. She doesn't keep that job very long. It doesn't take too much work to work through that part of the myth, right? Youthful beauty doesn't last very long. That's the idea there.